Professor Rao, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. It's a real pleasure. Yeah, it's a real pleasure to have you. I'm excited to have this conversation. We've we've been connected on LinkedIn for a long time, and I've been following your work. I know you've been following my work a little bit, and uh, this was really just a natural match for us to get connected and to have a, a conversation. Uh, you do a lot of work in the area of organizations and coaching and and leadership, and you, you've become known as the father of soft leadership. So today we're going to be exploring the characteristics of soft leadership and how soft leadership can be a game changer for organizational leaders. As we get started, I just wanted to share Professor Rao's bio with everybody. Professor Rao is the father of soft leadership and the founder of MSR Leadership Consultants in India. He is an international leadership guru with 40 years of experience and the author of 50 books, including the award-winning See the Light in You. He is a C-suite advisor and global keynote speaker, and he brings a strategic eye and long-range vision, giving uh, his multifaceted professional experience, including military teaching, training, research, consultancy, and philosophy. He is passionate about serving and making a difference in the lives of others. He is a regular contributing, uh, he's a regular contributor to Entrepreneurship Magazine, and he trains and new generation of leaders through leadership education and publications. He has a vision to build 1 million students as global leaders by 2030 and to share his knowledge freely with 1 billion people globally. He was ranked number one uh, as thought leader and influencer in the business strategy uh, globally by Thinkers360 and he invests his time in authoring books and blogging on executive education, learning, and leadership. He is a prolific author and a dynamic, energetic, and inspirational leadership speaker. Uh, again, Professor Rao, it's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm excited to have this conversation. Before we launch into the discussion, anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your personal background or, or professional context as it relates to the topic for today? Uh, thank you, John, for having me on your uh, show. And uh, greetings to all listeners. I'm speaking from India. Uh, as you have said, we'll expose our leadership in uh, today's uh, interview. Wonderful. Thank you. So, you know, you're joining us for, from India. I'm in the U.S. It's morning here. It's evening there. Um, I always love to have a global flavor to the podcast. And I've interviewed um, leaders like yourselves, thought leaders, industry leaders, uh, from around the world, uh, I've probably interviewed, I, well, I've interviewed upwards of 250 leaders around the world at this point for the podcast, probably at least 50 or more of them have been international. And I just love getting that uh, perspective because as you know, I've spent a lot of time living abroad, traveling and working in different um, cultures and, and national contexts. And of course, India is a major player on the world stage and uh, in, the, in the global labor market. So I, I think it's, it's very, um, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to have this discussion with you and to explore your perspective on soft leadership as it relates you know, to uh, specifically to India and the, the conditions in India, but also more globally, because I know you have a global reach. Um, as we get started, maybe you can, provide a brief definition for listeners uh, by how you think of and define uh, soft leadership. And then we can connect that back to leadership more generally and talk about the specific characteristics in relation to soft leadership that organizational leaders should try to embody and develop. Uh, uh, around 10 years back, uh, when I was conducting training programs for uh, corporates, uh, the audience felt that there was a need for a new leadership styles. Uh, they, they didn't have to appreciate the prevailing styles in leadership. Uh, then I thought it was a gap. There was a need to have a new leadership perspective. Uh, I'm from a military background, so I'm passionate about leadership. And uh, I earned my PhD in soft skills. Uh, then I thought, why not to blend the soft skills with leadership? So I researched uh, and created the soft edition. Then I requested Dev Aldrich uh, uh, to write a foreword for my book on uh, soft edition. And uh, he's trying to uh, create a leadership code for uh, the elements. 
So there are eleven Cs that collectively constitute uh, the soft leadership. They are a character, charisma, commitment, conscience, conviction, communication, compassion, consistency, consideration, contribution, and courage. So these are the eleven Cs. Uh, they are all which the father of modern HR uh, has. Uh, Uh, created leadership code for this elevencies and uh, and he has given sanctity to my a uh, new leadership style that is uh, soft leadership then i have written uh, several research papers they have been published in emerald journals and also related to leader and uh, various international magazines have published uh, articles on soft leadership then i have written uh, six books on uh, soft leadership uh, so uh, the soft leadership is basically about leading people through soft skills it is to emphasize uh, uh, people orientation without compromising uh, task orientation this is briefly about uh, soft leadership and uh, this soft leadership uh, uh, is different from uh, servant leadership because in servant leadership uh, all are servants but here soft leadership talks uh, uh, that there are no uh, leaders and followers uh, it's basically about partnership this is what is our uh, soft leadership so then i started writing more research papers uh, where this uh, concept can be applied so i have written a couple of articles and even research papers so this concept can be explored by nations to achieve peace and prosperity for example especially some of the countries they follow hard leadership that leads to uh, a conflict among the nations so exploring soft leadership uh, by nations helps it to peace and prosperity that's one aspect then second aspect is the soft leadership can be used by organizations to achieve uh, organizational excellence and effectiveness because uh, employees prefer to uh, work with uh, colleagues not with leaders and uh, followers especially the millennials the gen uh, who are also known as uh, uh, generation y and the centennials who are going to hit uh, uh, the workplace very soon they appreciate uh, working with uh, colleagues not with leaders and so i am sure this uh, perspective will not only appeal the millennials and centennials but also it will help uh, uh, bridge the gap between various generations in the workplace so it, it engages employees effectively it motivates uh, employees to contribute their best uh, so as a result uh, the organizations can achieve uh, productive and effectiveness Well, thank you for that that background, and and it's wonderful to hear about your connection with Dave Ulrich. Uh, Dave and I both live actually fairly close to each other. Uh, he's been a guest on this podcast, and we've interacted on a number of occasions. Um, he, he's a, a wonderful guy, and uh, to talk about the the uh, the 11 C's. Yes, <laughs> I, you, you're holding up your book for for listeners who can't see it. And so, uh, so, uh, Dave Ulrich has written the forward for one of my books on soft leadership. and uh, this is another book on uh, soft leadership yeah wonderful uh, for this uh, uh, dennis kerry has uh, written a book uh, is the uh, vice chairman of corn ferry and uh, this is one more book on uh, soft leadership and uh, the latest book on soft leadership is uh, the the type soft leadership a new direction to leadership uh, for which uh, philip kotler uh, the father of uh, Uh, modern marketing has uh, written a foreword and i have dedicated that book to uh, father of uh, uh, modern management um, peter drucker because i admire peter drucker management when i joined for uh, mba uh, the first person who attracted me was peter drucker so i have dedicated that book to uh, uh, peter drucker so that is the uh, beauty of that book titled soft leadership a new direction to leadership which is one of my one of the best sellers and it's the recently published book on soft leadership. Yeah, that's wonderful. And and I was just saying that uh it, it's wonderful to see your connection with all these um these amazing global thought leaders in the HR and leadership space such as Dave Ulrich um who I who I also know and uh building upon his framework for example around the 11 Cs. I think that's excellent. Let's now start to dig in to some of the very specific characteristics that you focus on uh as you approach soft leadership and then we'll connect that back to organizational leaders more generally and what we should be trying to do so you've already talked a little bit about um 
breaking down basically the hierarchy of an organization rather than having levels and you have subordinates and you have leaders helping everyone to just feel like they're they're partners and collaborators uh they're working together and i agree i think i think um millennial and gen z workers uh they're not so interested in titles and positions and hierarchy they're more interested in impact and getting things done uh, and so I, I think that's a really helpful uh, way to frame it. And it, it does require a kind of a fundamental shift in the way we view leadership if, if we're kind of from the old school uh, mentality, uh, you know, and we've, yeah. if, we, if we've worked our entire career to get positions and status and, and those sorts of things now to be working with younger employees who don't care about any of that, that can be a bit startling. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about uh, some of those specific characteristics and how we can start to embody those as leaders. Uh, in the sense, uh, what you said, you know, the millennials and centennials, they appreciate working with uh, uh, colleagues, partners. Uh, so they don't like the old mentality, what you said, you know, that uh, uh, boss supported those things, this uh, young generation, especially the millennials and the centennials don't appreciate. So, uh, so that is the reason why I point this uh, concept of soft leadership and uh, uh, it's going to impact uh, very positively in the workplace, uh, especially to engage the employees uh, effectively. So what was your next? Uh, the yeah, so what, what are some specific soft skills that are important within your framing of soft leadership? So some of the soft leadership qualities means uh, uh, that uh, persuasion, uh, then communication. So the communication is one of the C's I have already mentioned in the soft leadership. And uh, then again, uh, the qualities of uh, uh, conflict resolution, uh, then people skills. And then again, uh, one more say I talked about is compassion. Okay, uh, that's also related to soft skills. So these are all the things uh, uh, that I have taken from soft skills and uh, converted them by way of C's like uh, communication, compassion. Uh, so I have created uh, soft leadership uh, uh, into 11 C's. So, so basically soft skills are the foundation for this uh, soft leadership. Yeah, that's great. And let's, let's um, zoom in a little bit more specifically on persuasion. Um, because when I think of so soft leadership, that's usually one of the very uh, first things that comes to my mind and is at the forefront of my mind is the ability for us through gentle persuasion, uh, as opposed to, you know, carrots and sticks and trying to manipulate or kind of force and compliance out of our people, but the soft persuasion um, that happens through ongoing communication, it happens through uh, the genuine caring and empathy, like you referred to. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we can go about persuading those around us. And it doesn't even require any formal title or position. We can all exercise that soft skill and we can all exercise persuasion. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about that persuasive element and how leaders can start to develop that capability as they interact with their people. Uh, so as I said, you know, uh, this uh, uh, soft leadership emphasizes uh, uh, people orientation without compromising task orientation. That means there's a myth that, you know, uh, these people are, uh, the soft leaders are people oriented, they ignore uh, task orientation. But that's not, that there's a myth in fact. So the basic idea is to get the tasks done smoothly, successfully through persuasion, right? So. Uh, it is uh, to adopt the principles to accomplish goals and objectives. That means not to compromise with tasks. That's how it is. Yeah, and I think that's an important uh, reminder because, you know, I think some people view 
soft skills and soft leadership with a bit of an eye of skepticism um, because they think, well, business is about profits. Business is about innovation. It's about tangible outcomes. It's about KPIs, you know? And so as, as, as some leaders are listening to this, they might think, well, you know, soft, soft leadership, that's the warm and fuzzy stuff. That's not the stuff that really gets the job done. And you're emphasizing that, no, it's not sacrificing task orientation. In fact, we have to accomplish the main objectives yeah. of the organization. Otherwise the organization won't exist and we won't have anyone to employ and we won't provide our products and service to the market. We won't be able to add value to the market. And so that combining um, these elements with a task orientation so we can simultaneously get things done while empowering our people to be their best selves, um, to get the most out of them, uh, that's ultimately what we're really going for and that balance can be a little tricky at times. Uh, what, what do you uh, suggest to leaders when you go in consulting and you're trying to help them understand the importance of soft, soft leadership capabilities, uh, but perhaps they're, they're you know, if, if we think along a spe spectrum and maybe they're, they're pretty far over on this end of just thinking about business results versus finding a balance between results orientation as well as empathy, persuasion, and, and some of those soft skills. How do you help them to understand the importance of that and to start developing those capabilities? See, the point here is very clear. See, uh, the, the purpose of uh, business is basically for profits. So that doesn't mean that you ignore the people, right? So when leaders keep people before the profit, uh, they'll be able to achieve the organization goals and objectives. That means we need to emphasize on people, purpose, people. When you focus on people and purpose, automatically you'll be able to achieve profit. That's how it is. Similarly, the soft leadership is also like that. There's a myth that soft leadership means uh, uh, it's a kind of a gentle approach, soft approach. Uh, uh, to some extent, it may adversely uh, affect uh, the organizational bottom lines. It's not in that way. It is to use the people skills or soft skills in a right perspective to get the things done. So it can be compared uh, something like, you know, people versus profit. So organizations are basically for profit, but at the same time, only when you keep people before uh, the profit, you'll be able to achieve the goals and the objectives. So I would like to put it in this way. Um, it's like, you know, uh, 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 employees first, customers second, and shareholders third. Previously, there is a shift that, you know, uh, customer was first. Now there is a shift. Now uh, globally, organizations are emphasizing on employees first because when employees are happy, uh, they'll be able to satisfy the customers. When they satisfy the customers, what happens? Uh, they'll be able to uh, uh, increase the shareholder value. That's how it is. So uh, there is a shift globally from a old school of thought to a new school of thought. That, that means previously it was uh, uh, customer centric. Now the focus is more on uh, employee centric. That means you give value to employees so that uh, uh, they'll be able to uh, serve cust uh, customers well and satisfied customers will bring more business. So ultimately it leads to uh, shareholder value. That's how the process is. Similarly, the soft leadership is also like that. Focus on people, focus on persuasion. So you get the uh, task done smoothly and successfully. That's how it is. Yeah, I, I love that, that framing. And it, it is interesting because traditionally in business, we talked about profits and we talked about shareholder value, right? And, and over time that started to shift towards an employ uh, towards a, a customer centric approach with the same understanding uh, that you just described that if you have a, a customer centric approach, it will drive greater stakeholder value um, because you're adding value to the market. And what you're describing though, is starting uh, there, there's this additional transition now that we're talking not just about customer uh, focus, but we're talking about people focus and that people focus includes, of course, customers, yeah. but it also includes the, the internal um, stakeholders, the people within the organization, your employees. And I, I completely agree. I've done a lot of research in this area as well. When you have um, engaged, happy, purpose-driven individuals, employees within your organization, they produce better stuff. 
better products and services that adds value to the market. So the customers are happy, more loyal, more committed, that drives profits, that drives um, value in the marketplace and shareholder value. And, but when you can, you can make all sorts of sacrifices in the short term that hurt your people in the organization, that exploit your people and will burn them out and cause disengagement and, and keep people from um, being committed to the organization and its purpose. And ultimately in the long run, that will hurt the organization. If we want long-term sustainability of, of successful organizations, we need to focus on our people first. That will drive customer value that will drive shareholder value and it's a win-win-win all the way around and ultimately it, it, it provides societal value because we're adding meaningful jobs to the to um to the market where we are uh, providing good products and services and ultimately that's what everyone wants uh and and that does require a bit of a, a challenging of our traditional assumptions and a, and a shift in our mindset because we need to recognize the importance of focusing on people first. And so many organizations are built around um, something else. And, and if you're not focusing on your people and you're exploiting them and you're sticking it to them and you're, you're finding ways to get more out of them without investing into them, it, it, you're gonna have burnout and disengagement and ultimately um, it's gonna hurt the organization in the long run. Yeah, I do agree with you. See, employee engagement is a big challenge globally. Uh, employees are getting disengaged. So when you want to engage the uh, employees effectively, so you need to focus on people. Then again, when you focus on people, means soft skills. Then again, when you talk about soft skills, means you need to adopt soft leadership. That's how the role of soft leadership comes into the picture. Uh, and another thing is, uh, employees are leaving the organizations. Uh, uh, why? Because uh, uh, because of a few bad bosses. So employees are not happy with uh, the bosses. So they, in fact, they are not leaving the organizations. They are leaving the bad bosses. So keeping the uh, uh, I'm sure organizations, uh, but also for uh, nations uh, across the world to export. Get the results the way they wish to desire through peaceful and uh, uh, pleasant. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, Professor Rao, it has been a real pleasure talking with you today. I appreciate your your insights, uh, your your uh, tremendous contributions to the field of leadership and to organizations and helping us learn how to run our organizations more effectively. Before we close today, I did want to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your books uh, and the work that you're currently doing. And, and then we'll close up for today. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Professor M. S. Law, M for motivation, S for success, R. E. R. O. When they type on uh, such images, uh, they can find a blog, Vision 2030, 1 million global leaders, and they can find my uh, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and uh, Instagram, other social media platforms. They can also find my books on Amazon. I have written 60 books, but published 50 books. So they can find uh, several books uh, on leadership and also on mindfulness. This is a book I'll show you. Uh, the title of the book is See the Light in You. Uh, for which his only uh, Dalai Lama has written for him. So I have written books on uh, various uh, areas like leadership, learning, executive education. So like uh, this is uh, one more book uh, on CEOs I have written. 21 Success Sutras for CEOs. So likewise, you know, they, they can find all my books on Amazon. They can purchase my books and uh, they can connect me on LinkedIn and uh, I have two YouTube channels. I keep uploading videos regularly on uh, various areas in which I'm passionate about. So they can easily uh, get all my social media platforms. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much. It has been a real pleasure talking with you today. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected with Professor Rao on LinkedIn, check out his website, check out his books on Amazon. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.